The session is called Sell Smarter, Use a Headless Starter because I just want to go over some scenarios when it comes to e-commerce and when it comes to automation and challenge the norm of what we've been doing and what we've been using so far in the WordPress world. I only started my WordPress journey in 2018, so I'm not as well senior as some of you are in this situation. However, because I came from a marketing background and other technical aspects, I was able to gravitate towards WordPress pretty quickly and then start to understand it's a system of systems. Um, and those systems can create a lot of bloat when you're looking to get where you need to go and do what you need to do. So this option in this situation will help eliminate some of that bloat and give you back some performance without having to compromise on the outcome that you're looking for. The two tools that I use to do this are called Short Cart and Short Triggers. So I'm just curious by a show of hands, has anybody heard of these plugins or these tools or platforms? Okay, cool. So it'll be something new for pretty much everybody here. So these are two plugins. They have plugins, but they're actually platforms. And that's the reason why I use the word platforms before, because they are platforms that are off of WordPress and they connect with WordPress and give you what typically like a WooCommerce would give you or a Zapier would give you, but without having to, again, use a lot of bloat or have to deal with a lot of bloat or have to deal with a very expensive tool because Zapier ain't cheap, y'all. We all know WordPressers can be a little cheap. Let's keep it real. So I'll quickly go over like the technical definition of what Hendrix is and then I'll give my breakdown with it. Headless, just an overview of it. A headless plugin for WordPress is like a behind the scenes helper that does its job without changing the way your website looks. It handles important tasks and data management in the background while letting other tools take care of how everything appears on the screen. This way, your website can work faster and more efficiently as the plugin focuses on its specific job without getting mixed up with the website's design. And basically, it's really just a fancy way of saying that you're letting something else do the work for you because ain't nobody got time for that. Now, we got other things that we need to do and get done, and you need to have helpers help you out so you can get where you got to go. So with that being said, that's what this is all about, is helping you get where you got to go a little faster, again, without compromising what it is that you're looking to get. Now, why automation and integration? Using automation and integrations in WordPress makes it easier to manage your website, save you time, and helps you create a better experience for people who visit your site. By properly connecting different tools and making tasks automatic, you can avoid mistakes and keep everything running smoothly. This allows you to focus on more important things like promoting your website and handling other business matters. I know for a lot of developers out here and people in that such area, that is hard for you to hear because we like to get in the weeds sometimes. We like to have control sometimes. Sometimes we don't want to let it go sometimes. Sometimes you got to let it go sometimes. And that's hard. So when we talk about automation and integration, it's letting it go, letting something else take care of things. Now you got to check it out sometimes. It's not a set it and forget it scenario, but heck, it's going to let you get to a quicker destination. And that's what automation and integration is supposed to be doing, in my opinion, in a very simplistic or overly simplistic standpoint. So let's just dive in a little bit of that first platform plugin that I mentioned to you before called Shortcut. So here are a couple key features of Shortcut and overview as well, I'm trying to hit two birds with one stone. So first of all, Shortcut gives you a very simple setup and customization. The way that you would set up this plugin, I'm going to go into a demo of it, but the way that you would set this up is not necessarily the same way you would set up WooCommerce. WooCommerce is very heavy when it comes to the end of the road. WooCommerce comes at a cost, but it's a great plugin for specific reasons and specific needs. However, what people don't talk about is when you get into that WooCommerce world, you're going to have some woos and some woes that follow you afterward because you got extensions and you got data management and optimization and Google don't like that. People don't like that. All that stuff that you're doing I feel like for the average people, and this is what I was talking to Ben and Ron about last night, because, you know, Ben be trying to challenge you when you get an idea. He tried to challenge you. He hit me up with that. And Ron set me up for failure. Ron was like, hey, Maestro, tell, tell Ben what your idea is. What is it going to end up like? I told him what it was. And we talked. 
And by the end of it all, he agreed with me. We need to simplify this stuff. I tell people all the time, I love having the ability to serve clients. The last session he was talking about at the end of his session, how he was helping people within the business and everything like that. And I love doing that. But there's that part right there where you have to understand that there's the education part and then there's the profit part. Um, and there's the control part and then there's the empowering part. And when you are making people have to use WooCommerce in order to sell something and they don't need all that stuff, you're not empowering them to do what they need to do on their own. So you're making them dependent on developers and, and other people like that. Again, I like money. You know what I'm saying? Like I like to use what I got to use to get where I'm trying to be. And money helps you do that a little faster than doing that on your two feet. You can get a car sometimes. I skateboard, y'all. I kick push. I was Lupe Fiasco before Lupe Fiasco. But at the same time, now I can drive places because I spent some money. Simple setup is huge. And speaking of the money, multiple payment gateways. See, again, commerce, you got to add things to it to, you know, it comes out the box. Does it come out with PayPal? Does it not? It's like double dutch. I don't know if I'm jumping in, jumping out. Like, what it is it come with? I don't, depending on the website I got, sometimes it has the PayPal, sometimes it doesn't. I got these 15 Stripe plugins. Which one does what? You're going to conflict with what? Listen, I'm telling you, it messes up your money when stuff goes wrong. People are having conflicts. We don't think about that, but it does. Short part, it has Stripe, it has PayPal. We all know through Stripe, you get other, other currencies and connections. And then they just got Molly as well, too. And then they're doing more as well. But the thing is, is they're baked inside the plugin. You're not adding an extension to it. So that is the difference maker with it. Uh, product management. In short part, you're able to do product management. And I'll go over uh, a versus WooCommerce versus a short part or a comparison so that you guys can see that they're both needed. Automated taxes. So that's another thing, too. When it comes to taxes, y'all know we got to take care of that. Y'all know we got to take care of that. You got to take care of that. And if you're doing international uh, transactions, whether or you're doing local transactions, depending on what you're doing, you got to have, you got to take care of your taxes. So what's good about short part is that, that it has automated taxes baked inside of the plugin and taken care of for you because they have a, they pay for, that's a better word to say, they pay for a tax jar, which is one of the biggest automated tax companies in the world. Like I said before about affordability, tax jar ain't cheap. So if you want to do it on your own, then you're going to have to pay that, pay that toll. And I had to pay some tolls. Matter of fact, I got to, matter, I got to pay the toll before I, leave here today because they got that new thing when you're driving you know they don't even tell you with the money i'm like what the heck is i see signs coming through you better call this number i'm like oh shoot like, do i call it now do i wait till i get to the thing my destination i've never seen that i'm just being real with y'all that had me in a panic at first i thought i was about to crash or something trying to pay the toll while i'm driving here from cleveland automated taxes that whole scenario is with short card again it takes care of it with the tax yard with woocommerce People don't think about it this way. When you want to start taking care of taxes, you got to either do it manually and know all your territories and all know all the details and all this, this stuff that we don't really want to talk about, think about, or you got to do it automatically and you got to use what they call Jetpack. And then Jetpack connects with tax jar. And for those of us who know what Jetpack is, we know what that comes with. If you don't know what you're doing, once again, you're adding more complexity to your situation for no reason. That's what I'm trying to share with people throughout the process. I don't care what you use and how you use it, just what you're going to be adding, what you're giving and what you're taking from the situation. And these days we got this, everybody using this thing. I can have it all. I can have no, you can't. Uh, you got to know what you got to do. You got to, you have, it's a give and take. That's what life is. Choices and consequences. Look, I'm going to keep it real with y'all. Y'all might not like some of the realness, but I'm going to keep it real with y'all. We're not just here talking about WordPress. We talk about life. This is life. Discounting coupons. We all love a good discount. We all love a coupon. Discounting coupons is not something new. WooCommerce has done it, but I'm just letting you know, Shortcart has it too. And then reports and analytics is very important as well. Shortcart has very simplified reports and analytics right now. Maybe they'll get more complex later, but they at least have it. So these are just the key features when it comes to Shortcart. And as I mentioned before, we have PayPal, we have Stripe. And we have Molly as well. As far as the payment gateways today, I don't want to tell you what's on the roadmap because that's just, that's, that's, that's not important. You know, we want, we want to see what they're going to do. We all been tripped by the roadmap before. We have, we have a question on Yes. Yes, it has the Apple Pay and Google Pay. It, it has it already connected with it. Absolutely. Through us, through Stripe. Through Stripe.
So integrations wise as well, it has Learn Dash, and this is just the native integrations. There are other ways you can integrate into it, but I'm just giving you all the native integrations. The Learn Dash, Member Press, Shore Members, Lifter, LMS, and Buddy Boss are the current ones that it integrates with natively. Meaning when somebody makes a payment, it can do something in this platform next. You got to break it down sometime. We got to be layman terms. What did he talk about when he says integrations? We talk about connections, which we're all here for. Technically, we're all integrated here at WordCamp Buffalo, aren't we? Performance optimizations. I told you I was going to warm up, y'all. Y'all thought I was playing. Y'all like this fool. So he about to warm up. Performance optimization tips, store settings. So in it, you have, you can connect with Honeypot. That's for spam. For those of you all who know about that spammers, um, how many people are tired of when they start a new site? Was it a kiss, a kismet? And then for those of us who don't know, I told you I came in here in 2018. I'm thinking I'm using it for my business. They said, no, you could use it for free for personal stuff. What? You're saying for personal? I'm like, how many people out here really, how many people out here paying for the business side? Uh -huh. Look, I'm looking at some people right now in your eyes. You're probably using it on some other people's sites. And it says you're supposed to use one site for personal. No judgment, right? Recapture. So we got Recapture 3. We do that right there. For those of us who want to keep some of the bots away, you got to keep the bots away, like the bugs away. It's like bug spray, but for the internet. Then we got Stripe fraud monitoring. So yeah, if we're using Stripe, because that was the good, good question with the Apple Pay and the Google Pay, you have fraud monitoring as well too, because we all know there's some tricksters out there. So it just has some features that are just already natively within the, the tool that unlike WooCommerce or WooCommerce, you don't have to add, you have to add all these extra extensions and stuff. I know somebody in here that's WooCommerce heavy and it's like this guy. We also have a JavaScript EM, ESM loader for all of us nerds out there. And I think that's most of us out here. So yeah, it'll help. Now, this is a different one because sometimes it does good. Sometimes you have to turn it off, but most of the time you want to turn this on just to help with more performance, to help mitigate those scripts running. We want to keep those scripts from doing all that. I ain't going to say the word because this is family friendly. Uh, I got y'all. Disable slide card out. And that's another one too. WooCommerce um, has the cart slide out when you go to the site and the cart comes out so you can turn it on and off. And the great part is with this thing, when you turn it off and you don't need it, guess what it does? It gives you more performance. So we're all talking about performance while I'm up here performing. I don't need tips, but I appreciate it. And then let's go to a little, let me show you a little demonstration real quick. So I'll tell you what it looks like underneath the hood. I apologize for the, I ain't gonna apologize too much because this ain't my projector. But at the same time, I know it's a little blurry on the side. So this is a short part right here, what it looks like. Now, I think because of the pro projector, you might, there may be some words, but something like gray, it's that contrast thing. So this is the dashboard right here. You can see revenue, orders, average order. I'm in a guest demo site, so I don't want y'all to see how much money I'll be making. But I'll be asking you for stuff after work. So this is my guest account that I made right here. You can make one for free. The best part about short card, you can start it for free. All that stuff I just told y'all, that's in your free account. Look, that should have been a hand clap. Y'all never been in a comedy show before. Hey, come on. Yes, I told you all that's in the free account. All right, now we got, let's go to the dashboard. I was in the dashboard, so let's go to the products right here. So this is orders, excuse me. This is orders. I'm going to see if I can move this up because I wish I could see a little bit right there. Okay, boom. So orders, then we have products right here. So we like make some test products right here. And then we have the coupons. I told you I could do coupons. And then here's, we have the subscriptions. And then the best part about, about, about this is it comes with subscriptions. So we all know, what is it, Woo subscriptions? Come on, man. $200 for the year for the Woo subscriptions? What y'all doing to us? Y'all already know we got to pay $200 for everything else we got to do. And we got to do that. And if you don't do that, then you don't get integrations when it comes to other things because everything when it integrates with Woo subscriptions. And so it just gets crazy when you start talking about WooCommerce and really trying to build out a fast efficient transactional e-commerce ATM. I'm saying ATM machine. I'm talking about you put one in, you get 20 out. You know what I'm saying? That's how we should want it to be. I'm showing y'all something that does that. Subscriptions and then your customers right there. And then you have your cart right here. What I like is that you can customize your cart as well too. And they let you customize your cart basically with Gutenberg. So now you're using two birds with one stone. And that's another thing. With Shortcart, it uses Gutenberg when you build out your forms and you're building out your cart. And that's something that it gives you more performance benefit because you don't have to use something like an Elementor or Beaver Builder. Say that five times fast. 
what else is out there? Divi, et cetera, et cetera. You're using where WordPress is technically heading and WordPress is heading in the Gutenberg era. And that's just, it is what it is. Now, I'm not saying that you have to or don't have to use it. I'm saying that's what WordPress is heading. You ain't got to go WordPress is going. WordPress said, we going this way. And you can say, I'm going that way. And then see how it goes. But again, just the whole concept of this plugin is meant to actually optimize your website while helping you make money. WooCommerce ain't meant to optimize your website. I'm looking at heads right now. Is anybody saying something different? No, it's not. So this thing is meant to optimize your website. And what I love about it too is, for example, I'm going to just do this right quick. And then just to show you like the whole pricing part, this is one of the magics right here is being able to add your different type of payment type. So you can do one-time payments, you can do installments, you can do subscriptions, you can do free trials, you can mix and match this stuff to do like a, a paid trial or setup right here. That one, my bad, I actually the wrong one. You can do the free trial here and then the allow customers to pay what they want. So you can turn it into a donation. So you do, you can turn this thing into darn near Optimus Prime. You know what I mean? You can get into that whole transformer scenario. Type you need make your whole, do whatever you want. I'm showing y'all in real time. This ain't fake. I'm giving y'all a demonstration inside WordPress right now. This ain't no snapshots. We not in the matrix. Or are we? So at the same time, you can do this whole thing, which is add to the price you want. As I mentioned before, you got the integrations. You can do downloads, digital downloads. It's just the options are endless. So let me go back to the slide. But I basically just wanted to show y'all that you can do a lot with that. And that was a short card, but in a nutshell, as far as building out the pages and stuff, just for the sake of time, I'm not going to show you all that, but hopefully you get the gist. Like with WooCommerce, that was like 10 different plugins, y'all. That's what I'm trying to do. Like I'm telling you, that was extensions. Everything I showed you was another extension, another extension with another extension. That, that came in the free account. So let's talk about short carts. Sure cousin, sure triggers. Sure triggers is an automation plugin. So obviously I'm hoping I don't have to tell y'all that it's made by the same company. But if anybody here is not sure, it is made by the same company. Yeah, I did come off that with the top of the head. I'll be freestyling it, y'all. Didn't practice none of this. Maybe I should. We were drinking some things last night. Overview and key, key features. Let me go back one. Overview and key features of Sure Trigger. So Sure Triggers is a Zapier alternative. One of the great parts about Sure Triggers is you have the visual builder in multi-steps. So multiple steps to be specific. So you can visually see the automations you're building out when you're trying to connect different apps together, different plugins together, and you can do it with multiple steps. And again, this is right within WordPress, or you can just do it on their platform. The best part about this plugin is you can choose whether or not you want to do the automations and creations in WordPress, or if you want to do them on just the platform itself. You also have multiple plugin and app integrations. Zapier is still the king of that. Uh, this is more of a new plugin. They only have the free plan right now. And they have been out for, I think, about a year or so. Don't hold me to that. But they are new. Um, one of the best parts about Sure Triggers is that you have site-to-site -site integration capabilities. And that's not really easy to do in a seamless way. The thing that I think that most people don't understand when you're trying to connect multiple WordPress websites, until you have a solution like this. So for instance, there's a tool called WP Fusion. I'm not sure if anybody's heard of WP Fusion out there, but it was a way that you can connect sites through tagging, through a tagging system. Right now there's Uncanny Automator. There's other ones where you can share the login access. So when somebody comes in, I forgot what the plugin is called, but you can share like the credentials from one site to another. However, it doesn't always um, share all the information, like the tags. And so you have certain tags and people in certain lists and you want to share that. It gets complex. This tool helps eliminate all that because it's not based on your WordPress website. It connects to your WordPress website, but it's not based on your WordPress website. So it just allows you to easily say, hey, I want to transfer all this information from this WordPress website to this other WordPress website. Very simply, so smooth, like baby's bottom smooth. Then you have filters and conditions. This is where you just want to say, I want to do basic certain things based off of certain criteria. You have scheduling and delays that you can say, I want to hold off on doing this task, or I want to do this task at a certain time or a certain day. 
and then API and webhooks. And I don't know why I forgot the K, but it's supposed to say webhooks. And again, that's for connections as well too. So this is just an example of some plugin and apps that it has so far. I think it has currently 150 and their goal is to get about 300 relatively soon. They have everything from Active Campaign to Affiliate WP and Asana, Amelia, Fluent CRM, Fluent Forms, Easy Digital Downloads, Twitter, Vimeo, Spectra, the list goes on. So MailChimp, a lot of these are common tools that we've heard of. I'm sure everybody in this room has heard of a few tools on here and probably uses a few tools on here. So it does connect with those and it's getting more. And again, the whole purpose of me telling you about this is it's about simplicity. I mean, it just, it keeps things simple. And then we have the interface itself. I'm a big fan of a very clean and user-friendly interface. And I think that Short Triggers offers that. It offers a clean interface. Zapier offers a clean interface as well too. I like Zapier a lot. There are other tools like Pabli. I was a big fan of Integromat and then they turned to Make and they have a more complex interface. So when you're using automation tools, you have to think, is it something that you're going to be wanting? Is it functional and efficient? But at the same time, is it something you're going to be wanting to be spending time in connecting things and doing things? Because if it's something that turns you off or something that kind of gets in your nerves, you're going to do it less. And then you're going to have less automation setting up. Um, so you just got to be careful with that. And then here are a couple of like workflow automation tips. So when it comes to automations, I think that you should properly name them. That's a big thing. Um, because if you start to compile automations to the to, to dozens at a time or hundreds at a time, and you don't have a proper naming convention, things can start getting confusing, especially when other people are there to manage it on your behalf. Then you really can get confused or you can get somebody else confused. At the same time, you want to check connections, your actions, and your triggers. So that's what a short triggers it calls. It's different the way that it, I guess, activities, the con connections is what the apps Actions is what happens first, and then the trigger is what happens next. And then keep it simple. So keeping it simple if possible. We get over complex when it comes to sometimes these automations. You just got to keep it simple. K keep they say KIS, keep it simple, stupid. Sometimes you just got to stop being so complicated with life and with stuff. Publish automation when you're done. So... Once you're done, you just want to remember to publish our automation. Sometimes we forget to publish our WordPress pages after we just built one. Same concept. Just remember to actually hit that publish button after you've done all that work. You want to also test your automation multiple times after you publish it. So again, same thing when you're building out your WordPress pages. You want to test, go to the page, see does everything work well, work how it's supposed to work. It's the same thing with automations. I think a lot of people sleep on that process right there as far as testing the automations when they're done. They just think that it's just going to work. I can't tell you how many times I've sat with people and I had to remind them, hey, you need to test this. You need to test it three times, four times, five times, uh, because they would come to me and say, hey, this is not working. And the first thing I'm going to say is, did you test it? And then we go from there. Testing is very important. And then pausing or deleting unneeded and unused automations. And it's the same thing as when you cleaning out your closet or you spring cleaning or you um, cleaning out your database. You're cleaning off your computer. You want to have a good method of knowing when you need to put a stop to something or when you just need to get rid of something. And that's basically what I'm saying with that. So once you're stacking up all these automations, you want to keep a monitor on which ones are actually useful. Because if it's not useful, just let it go. And I can see a lot of us here probably have a lot of stuff on our computers or our Google Drive or our Dropbox that we haven't seen in years, yet we just don't want to delete that sucker. You got to just let it go sometimes because I know I'm the only one in here. And then as far as the demo, just like with the Shore part, let me just share with you guys real quick just what Shore triggers looks like on the inside. Okay, so this was one of the screenshots I had shared before as far as just what the dashboard looks like. I think it's pretty clean. It just gives you the information exactly what you need. And then from there, you can dive deeper into it. But I like having a very clean and nice looking dashboard that doesn't feel over confusing or overwhelming.
And then you can see your workflows right here. So workflows are all your automations. And what I like about this too is when you hover over an automation, it just share, it shows you which what it is. These are little things that I appreciate. I want the tool that I'm using to give me these indicators as I'm moving about and navigating through my way because it saves me time to try to have to think about it. I don't want to be thinking about everything all the time. So can you give me a proper visual indicator of what it is I'm looking at? So I don't take these little things for granted. I think that helps out a lot. So when you hover over the number here, you can see, oh, you have two more automations in, in this workflow. Again, those are the little things that matter in life. It's little things. And then as far as turning them on and off, you can easily just click the click this toggle here. So they make it very easy. And I guess from a nerd standpoint, I don't know, what is that like that Ajax type stuff? You know what I mean? Like that, where it don't refresh the page. Y'all know what I'm talking about over here. Come on now. But yeah, we have to refresh. I got my nerves when I click the button and I got to refresh. I'm like, we still got to refresh? I put on deodorant this morning. That's the only refresh that I'm trying to do after. <sighs> Maybe I'm just too, I don't know, too modern times for y'all wear pressers that are out here. I don't know. Y'all tell me. History. So, you know, you got your history. I like that. I like having transparency. We all need to know our history in America and the world. We all need to know our history. And we need to know our history in automations as well, too. Apps. So we have apps here. So now you get to see, okay, he was talking about the apps integrations. How do I actually connect them? Well, this is where we go down the yellow brick road. Okay, Alice. I guess that was, I messed that one. I messed that one up. Huh? Look, who's gonna correct me? Y'all, y'all don't even know that one. Alice wasn't. Yes, I was waiting for. Her. See, I gotta see if people on their toes sometimes. Now I can call. I'm gonna call myself out accountability. But if y'all don't call me out with me, what are we doing here right now? Y'all supposed to be teaching me too some. So yeah, whether you Alice or you're Dorothy, look, we buy hey, Kansas or the Yellow Brick, whatever it is, wherever we at, I don't know. This is how you integrate into, or this is how you add your integrations and automations into short triggers. You do it through the apps. And so you just connect the apps. You connect through an app right here and you just click it. I'm not gonna click it right now, but you see how you know the hand is over it. So you would just click it and then you would just connect very easily with your, your account for the situation. And this is a combination of plugins and it's a combination of apps and as well too, which is really nice. So I like that. That's very clean. And then you can see which I have connected here, even open AI. So for those of us getting into the AI and especially dealing with chat GPT and open AI, boom, you got that right there as well too. Okay. And then settings wise, you can export, you can import, and then... This is where I said that, because I, 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 hopefully this makes more sense, where I said that this is not just a plugin, this is a platform, because right here, there's a setting that says display short triggers interface inside your WordPress site. So right now we're connecting to the platform through a plugin, but it's not based on the actual plugin. That is headless in the sense of using it in WordPress right now. And the reason why I'm saying that that's important for you to understand, because that's what Ben was challenging me on what headless is to him and then what headless is in this situation. And he understood, oh, okay, in this situation, this is headless right here because it says, turn this sucker off, let it, let, turn it off, let it go. I can turn it off right now and it's not gonna show up, but my automations don't stop. Michael Jackson, don't stop. Oh, y'all don't know what we talking about. So you have the, the toggle right here. I can just turn that off. And then once I do, you won't see it here anymore. And it's not that it goes away and it doesn't come back. You would just go to the platform. You go to the website, you go to the website, you log in, and then you would check, check it again, turn it on. And then it would appear back on your WordPress website. Just like that, that fast. So then as far as the benefits of using them both together, you have a unified automation solution. When it comes to that, I specifically mean that if you go back to the apps and then you go to connection, you can see here, it connects to Shortcart. Of course, they, would, they should. That would make sense if they would have a connection with themselves. That would be pretty crazy if they didn't. And so you have a connection right there. And then once you have a connection right there, this is, let's go to an example of what it looks like under the hood. As far as, for example, and I, it was the trigger that comes first and then action that comes second as far as just the order of events, just to go back to that real quick. So I want y'all to know, you know, exactly what it is. So trigger right here, you would start the flow with your trigger. 
And then <clears throat> with short card, you see, see that right there. What I like about this though, is I can always change this out at any time, but if I wanted to just update this right now, I can update this easily through here. And then I can choose based on what type of event that this automation or this workflow is gonna start. So we have everything from purchasing to refunding, processing, order processing, customers created it, subscriptions, all types of subscription stuff, more refund, order fail, as we just mentioned before in our introductory panel that I was late at, don't judge me. I don't want, I, I see your eyeballs rolling at me. People fail all the time. So you gotta, sometimes you're gonna have some orders fail. You're gonna have some, so what happens next? When that order fails, what do you do next? That's important because that's how you sometimes get to keep your money. And when it comes to the e-commerce world, subscriptions past due, inactivated, more subscription, more purchase revoked. It just order paid. It just goes on and on. So those are just examples of how much power you have, how many options you have to create scenarios based on something happening. What is that something happening that you want to create a scenario on? Uh, most likely it's there. And if it's not, um, you can add, you, you can request it. But again, this is something that you don't get with WordPress without I me, mean, WooCommerce, without using some another tool. And when you do get that WooCommerce, that other tool sometimes is not as efficient. And there could be a lot of issues and glitches. So it's even think of it almost an Apple ecosystem scenario to a degree where, yeah, you can use it with other products. You can use Apple with Microsoft. But are you really going to mix vinegar with water all the time? You know, like we, can, we know we can make it happen, but it's going to be some separation at some point in time in that, that, that equation. I'll put it like that. Sometimes I got to use the big word, which are the calculations and the equations and the technical infrastructures and the data management. I'm just, man, what are we doing here? So unified automation solution. And then we have increased productivity and efficiency. So it just, as I talked about earlier, as far as just making sure that you are doing the things that you can in the best way you can without having to exert a lot of energy. And that's what these two tools, when you're combined together, you increase your productivity and your efficiency by using them as one. And then you also save time, you save money because all those activities happening typically are Things that back in the day, people would have to do on their own. You'd have to hire somebody to do these things. Now we have technology and we have automation and tools where we can just have the tool do it for us. So it does save a lot of time and it does save a lot of money. So WooCommerce is costly. As I keep explaining, whether you're paying for it based on who you're hiring or you're paying for it based on the money that you're losing, you're paying for it based on the time you're giving for it, you're paying for something. It's not going to be a free scenario. And then we have improved customer experience as well. So the forms of Shortcart are very, very, they're beautiful. Out the box, they have a really modernized checkout experience that WooCommerce does not have. WooCommerce's checkout experience is terrible unless you actually enhance it through other plugins and through other tools. And that matters a lot because of the fact that people that are on your website, they don't care about what you use and how you used it. And what you did to get where you wanted to be and, you know, how many kids you have and how long it took you to get through college and, you know, how long it took you to get to work, Camp Buffalo, and they don't care about none of that stuff. They want to get what they want and get out quickly. And we be caring too much about what we did and how we did it to tell our story. And we all got a story and we don't think about the customer on the other side. I don't care. I just want to buy that thing you got on your website. You're making it hard for me. That could be an R&B song. We ain't singing here. Because you, they are, you're making it hard. They, so you got to improve your customer experience. You prove your customer experience. You prove them dollars. You prove them pockets. And I'm telling you, I know I'm oversimplifying and I'm making jokes around it, but that's how people can easily win. No Charlie Sheen. Winning. Comparisons. Yeah, that's probably went over a couple of people's heads. I'm 36, y'all, but I got an old soul. Comparison. So short cart and versus woo commerce. We all know about the woo. Y'all learned about the shore. Let's see where we are. So Shortcart is a headless platform and a plugin. It's a custom checkout experience. As I told you before, you get to use Gutenberg to actually customize your forms and your checkout experience. It has multiple payment processing types. Also, it has automated taxes. As I mentioned, they have a, they, or they pay for tax jar. I was going to say they have an account with tax jar, but either way, they take care of the tax jar dollars for you and then multiple native payment gateways as well too. 
And then WooCommerce is a hosted plugin where you host it on your WordPress website. Um, it has inventory management. And so that is what's different between Shortcard and Woo is right now it doesn't have inventory management. WooCommerce also has physical and digital products. It has a mobile app. The mobile app is okay. I wouldn't say it's the best as far as usability, but it's better than nothing. And then extensions and integrations. WooCommerce does have a lot of extensions and integrations, which to some people that is a positive, but at the same time, depending on what you do and how you do it, it could become a negative. So that's some, some examples of Shortcart versus Woo. Then we have Shortcart versus Easy Digital Downloads. I've already mentioned the things about Shortcart. When it comes to Easy Digital Downloads, it is a plugin solution like WooCommerce. It also has extensions and integrations. Easy Digital Downloads has advanced reporting. And then it also does digital products only. And Shortcart right now does digital products only, but Shortcart is getting ready to do physical products very soon. Whereas Easy Digital Downloads will always only do Easy Digital Download. Oh, come on, man. Like, y'all keep thinking I'm going to let y'all sleep on me. Y'all lucky y'all got my sounds right now. We was in one of my sessions online. I'll be hitting my soundboard, waking y'all up for real. That's part of my session, but I couldn't do it here. So I didn't know what was going on. Y'all lucky. But you're going to learn today. Short triggers and versus safe here. So let's go to short trigger. Headless, short triggers is a headless platform and plugin. It connects to WordPress websites. It has affordable pricing and it's made for WordPress. Same thing with Shortcart. Zapier is a SaaS app software as a service. It integrates with thousands of apps. As I mentioned, Zapier is the king of, of automation and integration. Most popular connector app. And it has an established, a well-established customer to support. Depending on your experience, some of y'all may like that. Some of y'all may not, because sometimes APR support be tripping. But they do have support. And then there's a, another automation integration plugin on WordPress. It was one of my favorites before I got introduced to Short Triggers. It is a plugin solution. It integrates with hundreds of apps. Um, I would say that it's more built, and they would say it's more built for developers even though the average person can use it. And it has unlimited automations, which Shortcart does not. You have automation limitations based on your plan. But right now they only have a free plan. Getting started, free versus paid. When it comes to Shortcart, here's just, I just wanted to share a quick chart with you all about some of the comparisons between the free version and the paid version of Shortcart. You have subscriptions, like the standard on the, Free, but you have advanced on the paid. Then when it comes to installments, they both have installments. They both have sale tax. You both have free and paid trials. Support is a little bit different when you're paying for it. Product amount, you have 100 on the, so that is a limitation. You have 100 on the free, unlimited with the paid. Storage is a difference, 500 megabytes versus two gigs and plus. Order bumps. So when we talk about sales funnels and actually building out like marketing funnels and sales funnels, we got to think about order bumps and upsells because that matters. Most people don't buy the first time. And if you can increase your order value with when it comes to your journey, I think that's going to help you make more money. Shortcart does not have that in the free, but it does have that in the paid. Um, there's a, a plugin for WooCommerce called CartFlows. CartFlows is basically the click funnels for WooCommerce. So when you think about click funnels and how that all works, CartFlows' native scenario was to be able to have a connection with WooCommerce. And then you have cart abandonment as well, too. And the free, not in the free, in the paid, but not in the free. And then here are some support and resources. You have your, they have a blog, they both have a knowledge base, and they both have a change log as well, too. And then, like I mentioned before, if you want to do some feature requests, you can always go to one of their feature request pages and request. And roadmap. And they have a roadmap as well, too. So in conclusion, I would say that short cart and short triggers is just a great way for you to be able to optimize your website's performance without compromising on all the features and benefits that having a robust e-commerce solution and automation solution will give you using a headless way versus using a plugin way. Thank you very much. My name is Maestro Stevens again. You can find me on LinkedIn and here's some of my social media stuff.